The Pocophone F1 is made by Xiaomi, and because it's made by Xiaomi, you should unlock the bootloader and start modding it right away. Hey, it's Mitchell. If you're new to my channel, I make videos about the tech I use, gear to create content on Facebook and Instagram, being cameras, drones, things like that, along with the occasional Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Premiere tutorial. So I recently got the Pocophone F1, and as soon as I got the device home, I went to unlock the bootloader. And if you're unfamiliar with bootloader unlocking or modifying Android devices in any way, essentially with Android, you have the choice to load different firmware on the device. Now I know what you're thinking, it's all Android, and correct, it is all Android, but with Android, there's different skins and a different user experience that each company usually puts on their device, and this is especially important when talking about the Pocophone F1. Xiaomi's main source of revenue isn't their hardware, it's actually their internet services. And TechAltra did a great video about that, and I'll go ahead and I'll link it right here, but more or less what you need to know is that the reason why Xiaomi is able to create such a high value product that's got so many features is because they make a lot of their money on their internet services, being their music streaming services in China, their video on demand and video streaming services in China, and occasionally they'll even push ads to devices depending upon your market. Luckily, the moment you start modifying any Xiaomi device or you put different versions of Android on it, the moment all that goes away. And what you're left with is essentially a great platform to put whatever software on it you want. And you don't even necessarily have to do all of this. You can go ahead and take out a lot of the bloatware and a lot of the things that come on a Xiaomi device simply by downloading a Java tool and connecting your device to your computer and you can remove stuff like built-in apps, the stock calendar, the stock clock, if you wanna run the Google version of all of this. And so what I want to go ahead and demonstrate for you guys today is what I've done to my Pocophone F1, how it runs, and overall my experience. Okay, so now we are going over to my Pocophone and just to show you guys all of the apps that I currently have installed. Uh, we have the Xiaomi Authenticator app. The stock browser app cannot be uninstalled. I have replaced the uh, Xiaomi calculator, I believe, with the Google calculator. If I haven't, I can do that, but the Xiaomi calculator is pretty smooth. I have the Google calendar app, no Xiaomi calendar. I have the stock camera from Xiaomi along with the Google G Cam installed. It is worth noting that if you are running a MIUI 10 ROM, uh, it will go ahead and automatically give you the camera to API uh, so that you can run the G Cam and all of the stuff with it, which is great. I have the Google Clock app and one of the uh, great things about the Google Clock app is that if you have the alarm, you can go ahead and set up functions uh, and use the Google Assistant with that. My alarm every day is Astro World, the album by Travis Scott, so that it just picks a random song from that album for me to wake up to. And it's an interesting way to start the morning. Uh, I'll do a video about that if you guys are interested. Okay, so along with that, I have the stock uh, file manager, which on the Pocophone is great. There's no need to replace it. The stock gallery app, unfortunately, cannot be removed. I have Google Home, Google Keep, Instagram, etc. The stock messaging app cannot be uninstalled. You have to go ahead and install Google Messages with that. I don't use text messaging whatsoever, so it's a little bit of a waste. Me AirDrop, I'm gonna be doing a video about Me AirDrop, but it works a lot like AirDrop does for uh, Apple. I guess it's Me Drop, it's not Me AirDrop, um, but it works great, and you can go ahead and actually access the files on your phone from your computer over your Wi-Fi network. It's really, really cool. Uh, the Me Video app, I haven't uninstalled that yet, but I could. You see I have Twerp also. 
the Google Photos app. I installed Play Music just so that I can have access to a library of music I've uploaded to the service. Pocket Cast, which is what I use for podcasts, it's definitely superior to the Google Podcast app, at least in my opinion. Reddit, shout out to all the Reddit fam. Xiaomi gives you a screen recorder stock from the factory, which is pretty great. We have settings, SIM toolkit, Snapseed, uh, Spark Post, Speed Test, Spotify. There is a theming engine that comes with it, and I don't necessarily run any themes or stuff like that. Um, I'm usually either running like the stock theme or I'll, I'll run the uh, OnePlus theme that they have. I have the Yi lights for the lights in my house. But as you can see, all of the apps have been de-bloated from the phone and it runs great. Uh, one thing that I do wanna note, and I don't know why this is, but my screen on time is definitely not as good as it could be, and I'm not sure why. Uh, and if someone could explain that to me, that, that would be great. There we go. That is the experience that I have created for myself on the Pocophone F1. Uh, I might at some time in the future go to a Pixel ROM simply because I'm not using the face unlock that much or at all really at this point in time. And that's the only thing that doesn't work yet. Everything else on here works great, works flawless. And just for the heads up, for people wondering, I am running the Xiaomi EU ROM. Xiaomi.eu 8.11.15 on Android 9.0. Runs great, can't complain. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this brief demonstration of the speed and the overall experience that I've customized on my device. I've been really, really happy with the ROM I'm currently running on it. It's a version of the MIUI ROM, but as you can see, there's no bloatware, there's no built-in apps left by Xiaomi, and essentially, I have a device with all of the Google services that I want, a user interface that is relatively enjoyable to use, and I've got more features than come on stock Android. Along with this, I get stable, regular updates directly from the developers. I don't have to worry about the camera's quality getting worse, and in fact, I can go ahead and do things with software to make the camera better, and I'm really, really happy because for 330 bucks, which is what I paid out the door for this, I have a device with top of the line specs, a user experience that I really enjoy, and a day and a half of battery life. Okay, I'll link some of the resources I used to get my device where it is down in the description below, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Till next time, it's been Mitchell. Peace.